Take us back through the ARC championships and the NCAA regional meet. What did you see from your team that you liked? Well, um, it was really a, a, a tale of two different seasons in the fact that um, we, we didn't have a lot of competition on the men's side this year. And we, we kind of did. Now, we have a good conference, don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, we just have a really special men's team. And the kind of depth that we have this year, uh, it allowed us to do some some pretty some pretty fun things. I mean, we'd never perfect scored that conference meet. and. Um, we, uh, we certainly had goals, you know, but uh, just going out there and um, we were able to do a lot of things. Mid-pack, you know, we, we had, I think, thir 35, you know, lifetime bests on the men's side of the conference meet. So it's just really, we call it really a celebration of fitness. You know, just a really fun day where we can challenge ourselves. I, I love the conference meet. It's a good opportunity for everybody. Um, the women's side, however, it was a, a dual meet with Central and it was exciting. It was, I mean, all the stuff that I love about cross country that I think a lot of people don't, you know, they don't realize, oh, they just go run. The cross country is really exciting, you know, and you start doing matchups, you know, the, you know, 1v1, and, you know, and we had a plan out there, and um, the Central's a really good team. You know, they, they've had some hardships this year with injuries uh, to the point where I, I don't think people realize how good this team is, and I think they'll see them when they're healthy in track season. Central's going to be really good this year. Um, so for our girls with four freshmen in the top seven to come out on top, that was really exciting. Um, and two weeks later, we had to do it again. The regional meet for the men, uh, it wasn't a lot of pressure because we had a hundred different ways to get to nationals. I mean, if you look at regionals as sort of the gateway to the national meet, um, we, we held you know, a whole handful of keys. You know, we, we, could, we could take it easy and pack run. We, you know, as long as we're top six, you know, we, we're going to nationals. Um, we decided, hey, let's go win, you know, which is, I think is always the fun answer for the athletes. You know, they want to hear that. And, um, and North Central gave us everything and some. You know, we sat out uh, Tyler Shermerhorn for both those meets. It's, it's certainly our plan to run him at nationals. Uh, we're excited about that. One of our top guys uh, has just been, been hanging out with a little bit of an injury. Um, but we, uh, we got it done. And uh, we'd gone one, two, one, and did one other time with, Freiburger and Kyle a couple years back, but going one two at, at a regional meet, really fun, you know. And then our th our third man at sixth place. So on the men's side, uh, we just, you know, a real fun group of guys to be with. They're very confident and um, they just love to run. They, they love competing. Uh, but once again, on the women's side, we had a dog fight with um, with Central. Um, with a mile to go, they're beating us by 18 points. Um, I felt like our girls were in a good position, but we were running real tactical. Uh, we closed really hard and uh, wound up putting up about 40 points on them. You know that last, you know last mile, last 1,200 meters, with you know our two girls a freshman. You know we had some PRs. Uh, we had a gal in Carly Kramer never ran a regional meet. You know there she is, all region. Um, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, and then we waited because there was a timing snafu up in the north region, and we didn't get results for about two hours later because. This meet was kind of a parlay. Uh, we needed to get third, but we also needed Eau Claire to get fourth in the north, uh, which we haven't been in that kind of situation before. And following the nuances of how to qualify as an at-large cross-country team is, I mean, there's, it's very alg alg algorithmic. Uh, it can be confusing. Um, it's not the greatest way to do it right now, but it's what, how we do it. You know, out-of-region wins matter more than anything else, and we had one win and that was against Eau Claire. So when Eau Claire upset Stout, that's when we were able to subtly start cheering, but we weren't sure you know, until the next day. So again, a tale of two different seasons with the men, you know, a lot of confidence, more of just a celebration of what, what we can do. And, and with the gals, um, I mean, let's put it this way, Saturday night, I bet every one of those ladies slept like 10 hours. I mean, it's been you know, a lot of you know, you know, intensity, you know, so. Uh, but here we are, you know, for the, I don't know, six, sixth year in a row. We have both the men and women, you know, heading to the national meet, leaving on Wednesday for Terre Haute uh, with uh, some big goals. Uh, the, the men, you know, will go into nationals ranked second, and that's great. That's fun. Who wants to go in ranked first? You know, like, we have, you know, it's, it's fun to have, uh, you know, to be sort of a, an underdog, and uh, we've certainly had our, you know, had our year going in rank number one, and we all know how that worked out. You know, so 
We like going in as the underdog, and, and our women talk about underdogs. We go in ranked 30th, you know, so we have nothing to lose. Um, we're hoping to just send those girls out there uh, with enthusiasm and, and excitement and, um, and see what we can do. I mean, this is a very young women's team, you know, so very inexperienced. And sometimes inexperience holds you back. Sometimes it, it allows you to achieve things because you just don't know any better. You know, so, so that's where we're at. A long answer to a short question. You know, what else can I answer for you? Coach, you guys have seen the course at Syracuse yeah. already, both on the men's and women's side. How much does that help uh, with familiarity going into the meet? What's funny, and I appreciate the question, the last time the men ran there, we didn't really see the course. It was so foggy. I've, I've, you know, if you've seen videos of it, I've never seen anything like it. Um, we ran at nine o'clock in the morning and we did not see the course until the women's race. I was simply following the herd out there. So we've probably seen the course a heck of a lot more since then. Um, there's, there's film footage and everything, but in the moment, our guys just kind of went and, you know, and ran the thing, but a beautiful course, just a gorgeous, um, cross country course. I mean, this is this is grade A, you know, treatment for us. You know, so last year was was a bit more tumultuous, you know, of a cross country course. I mean, this year this thing is is beautiful. It's groomed. They've held you know multiple D one national meets. In fact, they, I think they have D ones here in a couple of years. So uh, the the women got to see the course. You know, we, the sun did come out, and, you know, and, and the fog dissipated. But um, but it's always good to know where you're going. Thankfully, uh, we'll be out there on Thursday as well. You know, so before the, the gun goes off, we hope to be acclimated to the East Coast time and, you know, and also to the course, you know, itself, so, yeah. Coach, so. um, you obviously knew you were going to have a good team coming into the season. Can you talk about what growth you've seen through the season so far? Yeah, well, again, a tale of two different teams. On the men's side, we returned so much. You know, we, we only lost from our, our national career last year, Christopher Collin, and what a, what a loss, but Christopher really set up these guys well with confidence and, you know, just really an understanding of how the sport works. Our guys are really bought in. You know, they, when people say, you know, what are you doing to get good? Sometimes it's just real boring stuff. You know, eating, eating well, you know, getting nine hours of sleep, just real boring, you know, humdrum stuff. Um, I couldn't ask for a better town to be in, you know, than Waverly, Iowa, and people say, oh, it's a sleepy town. We like sleepy. You know, we like quiet. We like not having a ton of things to do uh, because the one thing that we can't always do is go out and run, you know, so, um, very experienced team, but something that a lot of people are missing. We have a tremendous freshman class. Uh, we had six freshmen go, go sub 26 this year. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. So a really fun year, experienced team. Uh, the women, you know, the last couple of years, we had such tremendous women's programs that it almost wasn't fair. I didn't feel like I was doing a lot of coaching. I was more just encouraging and high-fiving. And, you know, but when you bring in a class of 15 freshmen, you know, on the women's side, you know, it really is starting, you know, starting over, you know, trying to build up culture, but also getting these gals to believe in themselves, to train differently. Many of them were small school gals, you know, that didn't have a lot of teammates. So um, I'm very proud of them, but I also feel a sense of accomplishment for my coaching staff. I think, I think it's been a really good year. Um, you're right, I mean, growth is the key. And if you look at where those gals, you know, even within a year, many of those women have dropped a minute uh, since uh, September. Um, but, you know, I, I attribute that to the legacy. Uh, last year's seniors were unbelievable. Um, you know, Ellie Myers led a great example here you know, for these young women on how to go about their business. You know, so um, let's put it this way. I knew that we were gonna be good on the women's side, but they're better than I thought they would be this quickly. You know, so, uh, and that's pretty fun. You know, it's not fun for the rest of the conference, but it, you know, we're definitely in a good spot. So, what else? Um, what's the preparation going to look like heading into the weekend? Well, we're on a taper. Uh, so you taper at the end of the year. So, I mean, not every school does, but we taper, we lower our volume. And um, this is the, the primo taper week for, you know, the guys. So it's the lowest they've been all season in volume. You know, the idea there, they're rested and ready. Um, the women, it'll be the third week. We're just kind of going to sustain the taper in the last two weeks. So we're not going to do much. You know, today most of our athletes are running anywhere between like 30 to 40 minutes, pedestrian stuff. You know, uh, tomorrow we really won't do much. I mean, we'll we'll do a little bit of turnover on Wednesday. Uh, but as they say, you know, in, you know where I'm from, like the haze in the barn. You know, we're 
we're ready to go. We just need to travel well. Um, that's something that we're pretty experienced with, you know, traveling. But when you travel, all of a sudden you're eating differently. You got to be able to sleep in a hotel. You know, it's something that I, I don't think anybody you know knows yet. We had a, an interesting one on Friday. We stayed in a really nice hotel in Moline. Nine o'clock at night, you know, the electricity went out, and it stayed out for 24 hours. You know, so we had some adversity where we had to wake up in the morning. There was no breakfast for us. You know, they, they, you know, we had something set up. We went across the river and found a different hotel and ate. And those are the situations where our kids could have panicked. They could have been, you know, like edgy and not slept well. We really rolled with the punches. Traveling well um, matters a lot. You know, so we just need to make sure everybody's in a good place with their academics. You know, they're feeling good. They communicate with their professors and all that, all that good collegial stuff. Um, so that we can be out there in Terre Haute and be focused on just being there in the moment, not worried about all the other stuff going on, you know, in their lives. But as far as running goes, we'll do a little bit of a workout tomorrow, some, some hard strides on Wednesday, and see what we got. Coach, can you uh, discuss uh, Haley Meyer and her overall uh, elevation of uh, her career? Obviously, it's now a three-time All-Region uh, kid. Uh, Nationals two years in a row. Uh, how has she gotten to this point? Uh, where does she have, have to go yet? Haley uh, is a tremendous, tremendously talented young lady who never really liked cross country. Uh, when she came in to Warburg about two weeks before the year started, you know, she wasn't even sure, you know, about doing cross. You know, and I said, come on, just give it a chance, give it a chance. Her mileage was so low coming from a small school, as you know, and um, and holy cow, like. That has changed so much. I mean, she you know, obviously had success as a freshman. She ran in a national meet, and now she's just an integral part of our of our crew. You know, I mean, she's been you know as high as our one girl. You know, this year, um, she's one of those gals where, as a mid distance runner, cross country isn't maybe you know her cup of tea all the time. But if she can stay locked in in the middle of the race, she's going to close better than just about anybody. You know, so you never know. I mean, her first year with us, she went to nationals, and in the last mile, I think she passed 53 people. You know, so you just got to keep her, you know, awake in the middle, and that's getting easier and easier and easier. She's been a great training partner this year uh, for Ellie Meyer, no relation, um, and uh, that certainly helped her with her confidence. But just a gal that brings a lot of joy to the program. I have no no issues, no troubles. You know, she's never she never has a bad day. You know, I've never seen her have a bad workout. Um, but she brings a lot of stuff to the table. I mean, she's probably one of the only gals, you know, at the cross country national meet that can also run a 56 second 400. You know, so track season, I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we certainly have some plans. Um, get her there in the 800 and hopefully, you know, we can have another DMR, you know, All-American crew like we've had the last, you know, handful of years. You know, but just a, an integral part. If we don't have Haley, we don't go to nationals this year. On the men's side, you were able to kind of hold off North Central in kind of traditional team sport yeah, terms. Yeah. How does that translate into your offensive and defensive plan for the weekend? Well, North Central's always going to be good. You know, we beat them by 100, you know, a month ago or so, and you knew they were going to give us a run. It just, it doesn't matter. That's a program that they have such a, a rabid alumni base. The kids work their tail off. They're a lot like us, honestly. You know, they're just a, a private college that really, you know, has has a good, you know, handle on, you know, on all the little things. You know, and um, we we know they're going to be around. Pomona Pitzer, you can't count them out. They've won three or four of these things. They weren't supposed to win last year, and they found a way. The lacrosse team that we're encountering is unbelievable. I mean, more more depth. But lacrosse, they're similar to us, and their biggest strength is their depth, and their biggest weakness is that you can only choose seven. So. You know, I'm sure they're hoping they choose the right seven. I think you know how I feel, but um, a great team to run against. Those are really hardworking kids. Um, North Central is just, we always know they're going to be there. You know, they're, they're going to give it their all. I mean, if you saw the, the end of the race, I mean, they had, they had guys, you know, pretty much running themselves into the ground all the way through the finish line. You know, I mean, four points for a regional title. That's, you know, let's put it this way. We are not going to get in the habit of just beating North Central, you know, year in and year out. And if our guys start feeling, you know, entitled about that, I will remind them, you know, of the 20-odd national titles that that program, you know, has. So as an Augustana alum, you know, I've been getting my butt kicked by North Central, you know, since I was 18 years old. Uh, so anytime we can get them, 
you know, it is, it, it's an empirical victory, right? For me, I, I look back and 18 year old Chapman is, is beaming, uh, but we know that we'll have our hands full with them. Um, NYU's got a great team, you know, this year. Uh, RPI's looking good. Whitewater's tough when you got, you know, two runners, you know, that ilk up front. Um, you know, so I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Geneseo is always, you know. So the, the thing about cross, in a small meet, in a dual meet, kind of like our girls had at, at, re, at a conference, you can really be tactical. You can definitely be tactical in track season. But when you have a cross country field of 350 odd people in a huge starting line, there's only so much tactics about it. I mean, if, if I were to say, you know, a mile in, hey, there's so-and-so, run with him. I mean, 10 seconds will separate 120 people at that point in the race. So um, it, it's one of those things where late in the race, we want to find people and, and, you know, get people. And if I say, hey, there's Pomona's five late, hopefully somebody will respond to that. But in a sense, team-wise, you are alone out there for about 5,000 meters, just hoping that what you have is enough. Hopefully we can pack together and, you know, put together a great day. I mean, we haven't had as good of a one, two, three, you know, maybe ever as we do right now, and that's without Sherman Horn. You know, so we feel really good about what we, what we have. Our mid-pack has to be a little bit better. And we can. We absolutely can. Uh, we fell off a little bit at, uh, at regionals. Uh, but, uh, I mean, when you're talking about Lancel's an All-American, he's been here. You know, Shane Herb's a really talented, hardworking guy. Eli Larson, is, it's his first um, national meet, but he's, he's a real chill, calm guy. He's not a real nerve, you know, guy. So those guys just need to put themselves in a good spot, and, and we should be doing just fine. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it.